Hey guys, Brian's here. Today is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, and it's the first year of a new trading calendar. Jumping right into it on the left hand side of my chart, this is the SPY 15 minute time frame, and on the right hand side, we have the SPX 15 minute time frame. For those of you that are new here, I do most of my analysis on the SPY, but I trade SPX options. The levels that you see plotted on my charts are taken from the gamma exposure profile. If I were to clear this chart, you guys will see there are no studies on this chart except for the standard VWAP that ships right with any trading platform. If you've been following any of the videos I released in December of 2023, so last month, you guys would have known I've been sharing these videos at the start of the week and then at the end of the week showing how price action traded around the gamma exposure levels. In this case here, you guys can see the levels in this video. I'm not going to do a dedicated video on them this week. And these are the videos that I'm referring to. If you are completely new to this, I would highly recommend you check out this video right here. I will leave the link in the description, how I prep for the week using gamma exposure levels. These gamma exposure levels pay in dividends almost every day of the week. I love doing this at the start of the week and then I don't need to do much additional analysis. I can then base most of my trading decisions around 15 to 20 minutes worth of work at the start of the week. And then I use additional confluences like some of the quant trading app scripts and some of the other stuff in which you guys might have seen on my videos. On the SPX on this right hand side, these levels are taken straight from the quant trading app script. So I didn't draw anything in here uh, manually only on the SPY side, I've plotted these levels manually. On a day like this, I would start the day expecting to run an iron condor. The purpose of this video is I just want to demonstrate the reasoning behind why. I trade iron condors, but I'm not one of those guys that like to trade iron condors every single day and then roll or adjust and try to have a 90 something percent win rate. I will close an iron condor if it is giving me a problem. I would rather just try to spot days in which I have high conviction that price action is going to be choppy. Today is one of those days in which I expected price to be choppy. If we take a look at the Quant Trading App Discord here, this is in a sense how I started the day. This is the Iron Condor. I opened this here at 9.48 Eastern Time and I went with a 3 DTE Iron Condor and then I'm going to show you guys a 0 DTE Iron Condor also in a second. But the logic or the thought process being is that price will be choppy. Why do I think price will be choppy? It starts off for me as a person that is generally looking to sell volatility. If we take a look at the VIX, which we use as a proxy for implied volatility, it spiked and it jumped this morning. This is something that we have not seen in a while. I'm actually going to turn on the uh, QTA weekly study just so you guys can see something for a second here. So we popped up and I'm going to turn on also the pre-market information and you guys can see here. So we popped up to what Quant Trading App is saying should be a good level of resistance for the VIX. So that caught my attention. But even if you're not using something like this, just know that it ended up spiking and that's not something that we've seen in a while for the VIX. So it immediately caught my attention and I smiled for a person that likes to sell put credit spreads or likes to run zero DT iron condors or zero DT iron butterflies. This always gets me a little bit excited because the next thought process is going to cross my mind before the market opens is where is the SPY gapping down into? Because if the VIX is gapped up, then it probably means that the SPY or the SPX is gapped down. This is the magic right here for me. It's the fact that we gap down into the gamma flip strike, which was also the highest negative gamma strike from pre-markets. These acronyms or abbreviations that you see here are manually put in. AG just stands for absolute gamma strikes. So these are the high absolute gamma strikes. N just stands for negative one, negative two. So these are the strike prices that had the highest negative gamma, the highest the second highest negative gamma and so forth. This is where the negative GEX in a sense falls off for this week. So I plot these again. This has been demonstrated in multiple videos. I highly recommend you guys check those out for a firmer understanding. This is a screenshot here from Quant Trading App four minutes before the market opened. This is an aggregate of every expiration for this week. So I'm just plotting the levels that I see right on this graph here. So this is letting me know this is the gamma flip strike. This is letting me know right here. This is the second highest absolute gamma strike. This is where there's a ton of negative gamma and all and so forth. So all these little bubbles that you see on the chart right here, I just plot those on my chart to be able to not have to glance back at the data so much. And that's where I got this 472 strike right here. So just to make that clear, N2, it is the second highest negative gamma strike. This is the highest negative gamma strike. This is the second highest one. And then this little gray bubble right here is letting me know it is the gamma flip strike.
If you've never heard of any of this or it sounds like some sort of weird alien language, just know the expectation around here is for price to be choppy. This strike is where the overall net gex for the SPX is expected to turn negative if price is below it or about the general area. So around this area here, if the SPX is below it, then the overall gamma exposure is going to turn negative. Above it, then the overall gamma exposure is positive. It is natural or it is normal for the SPY to be in a positive GEX environment versus in a negative gamma environment. So inherently what that causes is choppy price action around this strike price. Now, if we gap down into that strike price and imply volatility is pretty high, a lot of experienced volatility sellers will use that as, an, as a reason to sell out the money puts because retail traders will see a gap down and they will, you know, get super excited everyone thinks the market's going to crash everyone loves to jump on being extremely bearish without understanding there isn't a firm reason yet if we take a look at the economic calendar there was nothing really on the calendar for today i pay attention to anything that is a major market moving catalyst here so anything with a bubble that's red we can see tomorrow's the fomc minutes and then we have some manufacturing index report out at 11 a.m eastern time but for today there was nothing i don't pay attention to anything that does not show up as red it could be i could improve on that i could pay attention to more reports but honestly i would rather not pay attention to any of these things if it wasn't for the fomc and the cpi i probably wouldn't even be paying attention to the economic calendar as a whole so this is the iron condor that i ran i went with a 3 dte here and in this case i used a strike price Price to short some calls that are above another high gamma strike price and then I shorted some puts below a high negative gamma strike price for Friday. If you are new to trading spreads, if you are new on margin trading but still would like to be able to participate in shorter DTE trades, a good sweet spot is three to four DTE spreads. So if you're trading iron condors or iron butterflies, they are a little bit less risky than trading the zero DTEs. I will showcase a zero DTE iron condor in a second. So that one worked out amazing. But for starters, this is the first trade that I ran. I ran this one pretty early because I didn't really need much conviction or much confirmation in price as I already made it safer by trading options that expired further out in the week let me just uh, head back to the spx and we can see right here this little green level is letting me know straight from the qta study so if i were to just turn this on or off that script actually plots these gamma exposure levels on my chart for the weekly expiration so it's letting me know the strike price up here is the absolute gamma strike at the start of the week for friday's expiration so selling a call above this strike inherently made me feel a little bit safe and then i'm selling a put all the way down here so it has a nice wide range i'm using some other tools again i'm leaving them out of this video because i don't want to mention all the confluences you guys know i like to look for a million different reasons usually before entering some sort of a trade but every now and then it can come down to just paying attention to what you're expecting with price action around these gamma exposure levels if price in the spy was to rally it would have to break past all of these significant strike prices so by selling a call all the way up here i inherently have more conviction because there are our levels between the strike price in which i'm selling and the same thing to the downside. This is where negative gamma exposure, in a sense, kind of rolls off. This area down here had some other levels on the SPX. If we were to zoom out, we have last week's levels here. We also have this is the max pain strike for the weekly expiration. So this usually acts as a key support or resistance level. I also had the QTA intraday level right here. So there was a, a bunch of other little levels below. And then there are a bunch of levels on top. That's usually what I'm going to look for when I'm running iron condors. Again, I like to apply some sort of technicals. I can't just trade an iron condor just based Based on the deltas even if i'm selling an iron condor that has a delta of 0.5 I'm usually going to be a little bit of a wimp and if price just makes one little move i'm going to probably freak out and close it as much as I, as long as i've been trading iron condors it still makes me a little bit uncomfortable considering how much risk you might use you might be using something like twenty thousand dollars in credit to maybe get ten two thousand dollars in premium and these numbers regardless of how long i've been trading still you know still can cause a little bit of that uneasy feeling in your stomach because especially if you're trading a zero DTE, you know what you have out at risk. You know how much margin is being used. And yes, you're not going to lose all of that, but it's still unsettling, especially when you come from a background where you used to try to use 2K to make $20,000. Have I ever had a trade that turned $2,000 into $20,000? No, but there was the possibility for that. And just knowing that possibility makes it easier to trade that way. However, at this point in my career, I'm no longer taking those trades that often. It might only be a handful of times every 
every quarter where I'm taking a shot at some sort of a 10x type of return. But for the most part, I prefer to run these iron condors. So paying attention to where these high gamma exposure level strikes bar are, knowing where the gamma flip level is, understanding whenever implied volatility spikes, it means you can sell an iron condor and you will have a wider range for that iron condor because that's the dynamics of Let's move on to the zero DT iron condor. This right here, as you guys can see, so this is after 10 a.m. Eastern time, iron condors should have a good week. IV started off relatively much higher than what we've been seeing, meaning you can sell options and collect a higher premium. Iron condors can be wider, unlike the past few weeks. Spies at the G flip strike to start the week is a big deal as price will not want to close below it, which means it's likely to act as an area of support, but price should also be choppy around it. Both cases make for nice data decay on iron flies or iron iron condors so this is 10 a.m eastern time here today shortly just a few minutes after 30 minutes after the opening range has been established this is our end one this is our g flip so you guys are seeing right from here at the start of the day the thought process so with that being said after opening the swing trade or the trade that has a longer dte price action has proven that it has established a safe range for the zero dte and that's where my interest becomes peaked on what type of zero dte iron condor would i like to run something that i can add extra pnl this is an opening range iron condor so it just means i'm just shorting the put and the call based on the spx opening range so if i were to zoom in right here let's just plot these levels on my chart so we'll call that 45 and then this will be 35 so 47 35 so i'm just rounding numbers so we have 35 and 45 that is 35 and 45 so i'm collecting a really nice high credit high premium you know options at this point here because they're very close to the money they're not like selling a 0.05 delta or you know a 0.10 delta these are going to be around a 0.30 delta sometimes even a 0.35 maybe even a 0.40 delta so they're very close to the at the money strike but they're still out the money and then going with a little bit wider with the wings. So this is a zero DT iron condor. These are not the type of iron condors you will want to hold for the whole day. However, in this case here today, by the close at expiration, this iron condor ended up having a 100% return on the credits because the market ended up closing right within the opening range here. So this is a strategy that can be used. Again, it's not a strategy I would hold for the full day. I would generally look to receive about a $2 time decay or three dollar time decay so if i'm selling three or four of these once i'm up two bucks per lot i'll probably look to close this trade out this is the pnl from the this is the pnl for the lifespan of the trade in case you're curious so around 10 a.m around here so it's going for about 13 bucks and then you guys can see within about an hour's time or so the trade was ready up well over three dollars or three dollars in decay if you hold until the close the screenshot was taking five minutes before the close just so i can showcase to you guys what happens at the last few minutes of the day the decay went from eight bucks all the way down to eight thousand fifty cents because that's what you want with an iron condor and that's what you're looking for you're looking for a massive you're looking for a juicy decay in premium when you sell these options to people that think that the spx is going to make a large move however we have conviction we have an edge we have some sort of an understanding of what's going to happen and by we i mean any type of trader that is using any type of advanced tools such as gamma exposure maybe you're paying attention to open interest levels on the options chain maybe you're just relying on technicals the more and more confluences and the more and more things you can understand it's in this case here to recap it was the idea that the vix had popped up this morning we had gapped down to the g flip strike which is also a high negative gamma strike so there's a confluence of these high gamma exposure levels the expectation would be priced the expectation would be price would be choppy on top of that understanding that a lot of experienced options traders love to sell out the money puts. So even though the markets may be a little bit on edge right now, it is the start of a new year. The expectation would be an increase in volatility. It's not going to drop in one straight shot. So even though we had a little bit of a gap down, it's going to want to consolidate for a little bit. It's going to want to be choppy around certain areas and it's and it just makes sense for it to be choppy around the strike prices that have a lot of gamma exposure on the other end you want to have some sort of a plan and an idea for where you're going to close the trade if it goes wrong maybe if you're going to roll maybe if you're going to close out the untested side everybody's adjustment strategies are different sometimes the best adjustments in my case is also just closing the trade i try to open up iron condors in days in which i don't think i'm going to need any type of adjustments because i am using more of an advanced analysis for the markets and i'm also paying attention to technicals and then i'm paying attention to the structural levels around my iron condor and the reason for doing that is just to help 
add conviction to help allow me to stay in the trade longer because without these levels i will have very weak conviction and i will probably close my trades out much more prematurely a large reason why i studied a lot of this and built the tools to even be able to discover this was to increase my conviction earlier on when i started trading iron condors i used to be very nervous especially when i was trading weekly iron condors and i would close them out prematurely nine out of ten times they would always end up working out but it was difficult to hold them throughout the day every little tick makes you nervous and now you get to the point when you're in your trading career where it's no longer as nerve-wracking but that's just because it's on the back of all the research and analysis in which i've done and it makes it comfortable to open up an iron condor and then move on with the day by just setting certain alerts and being able to analyze other instruments adjusting long-term portfolios and so forth hopefully this video helps provide some sort of insights on zero dt iron condors thanks for watching guys leave a comment down below if you learned something share the video and i'll catch you in the next one